Hey gang, today we're going to do a couple of licks in the style of Terry Kath. Actually, we're not. We're going to play the entire first chorus of the solo to 25 or 6 to 4 by Terry Kath of Chicago. Now, this was inspired by a live stream the other day where I was asking my members, who should I do next for the licks? And one person said Terry Kath, and I said, yeah, that sounds good. He's kind of underappreciated, really, for how amazing he was. He had incredible chops. <laughs> And not only that, but he was a melodic player. He could come up with lines that had really recognizable pieces to them so that listeners who were not guitar players who could enjoy them as well as we guitar players who understand sort of the technique and like the fast play and all that, maybe we like it a little too much. But anyway, he's got it all. So we're gonna go over this one. It's a great one to learn for sure. Now I do have the tab for this one, but I would urge you to not just use the tab because there's a lot of little tricks that are in there. So why don't you follow the whole thing? I'm going to do a demo first and I'm gonna do it naked, so to speak. No, I'm gonna leave my shirt on, but what I'm going to do is I'm gonna play it without a backing track so you can hear it as clearly as possible. And then we'll go through it line by line. Now, if you like this video, please give it the like. And if you haven't yet, subscribe for one of these every single week and sometimes even more. All right, let's get on with it now. Let's talk briefly about the sound. Now, last time I did some Terry Catholics, I used a PRS and I got razzed for it. Hey, why don't you use a Tele? Which was Terry Kath's favorite guitar later in his career. Yeah, I didn't. Anyway, this time, okay, I'm using a Fender Vintera, which let me tell you is probably not the right guitar for this one, but there you go. Other than that, the only thing I did for the sound was I used a little bit of fuzz. Please don't use too much. I just used a little bit of fuzz and I used the neck pickup. And why did I use the neck pickup? Well, because when you listen to the album, you can hear between those bends in the first chorus and the second chorus, you can hear it switches to a much treblier sound. Much, much more trebly sound. Anyway, I suspect he simply switched the pickup from neck to bridge, whatever guitar he was playing. And so I followed suit there as well. Anyway, if you don't like that, you can do what you want for the sound. But just don't use too much gain, okay? <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to talk just very briefly about the theory. And you can skip this if you want. There's, I've indexed it, so you can just skip ahead if you want to. But anyway, for those who want to know just a little bit of theory, this chord progression lends itself to a couple of different things. You can hear Terry Kath playing some interesting things in there, some interesting notes. I'll just say that it's basically an A minor pentatonic that he's playing, but occasionally he will throw in a harmonic minor note, which is the G sharp, and occasionally he will throw in a Dorian note, which is particularly that F sharp. Anyway, the chord progression itself to adding those other two notes and if you want to know more leave me a note in the comments and I'll do a deeper theory lesson on this but just for now just think A minor pentatonic I can also add a G sharp in there and I can also add an F sharp and that's what Carrie, Terry Kath did in fact you can hear it from the very first opening line so let's get to that right now all right here's the first line we're going to start out on the E5 and it goes like this Okay, 
up until the end, it's pretty much characteristic of the A minor scale. There's one omitted note, but it ends on a really interesting note. So let's go through that. So we're going to start out right here on E5. We're going to play E5, E7, E8. And actually, I think there's two on, the, on E5. Then we'll go up to A5, A5 A7. D5, D7. G4, 5, 7. And then B, 5, 6. Slide up to 10 and up on 9. There's that G sharp that's characteristic of the harmonic minor, the A harmonic minor. All right, that's the first line. All right, let's do line two, my personal favorite of the first chorus. Let's check it out. Okay, super cool line right now. We're going to start out here. Just so neat. And it follows chord tones, if you can guess that. So anyway, we're going to start out on B10 and slide down to B5. Second line, or second part is on the G string, we're going to hit nine and slide up to 10 and then four and slide up to five. This is on the G string. Okay, and then we'll play G9, G4, D10, slide down and play D6. All right, now where does that come from? This is kind of interesting. It's really just a series of notes out of chords. If we think of this, this part right here is just this. And it's kind of like an A minor. This part right here is kind of like an F major. This part right here is kind of like an E major. And this last one gets that total flavor of that harmonic minor. Right? Pretty neat stuff. Okay, here we go with line three, and then it gets really fast after that. So let's check out line three. Okay, here is line three, slowly. Okay, we're going to start out on G2. And then we're going to slide up to D7, which is actually the same note. Typical bluesy sort of thing. Then we're going to play G5, 4, 5, 7. And we're just going to kind of walk it up. So we're at 9 here, G9. And then we'll play this. So that's actually pretty interesting. We're playing... G7, G9, B7, and there's that F sharp or that Dorian note that we were talking about. Okay, so there we're playing G9, B7, B8, and then B7, 8, 10, and that's line three. Okay, hang on to your hats because we're going to pick up speed a little bit. Limber up your fingers. Yeah, we're going to pick up a lot of speed on line four. Here we go. Okay, let's play it slowly. We're going to pick up where we left off on line three, which is at B10. Here we go. Now, playing it just at about 80% speed, it sounds like this. That's pretty fast, just at like 80% speed. So you can't really think when you're playing this. You just kind of have to memorize this line. 
And at least for me anyway, that's how I have to do it. So let's take a look at it. What is it? Well, I think it's good to get it into chunks. So the first chunk we're going to do is this. So let's get that part down. So this part is we're starting on the B string. We're going to hammer on 8, 10, and 8. There's a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs in this lick. So 8, 10, 8. 7, 8, 7. This is on the B string again. Now we'll play 7, 5 on the B string, 7, 5 on the G string now. And now we'll play five, 4, 5, 4 on the G string. Okay, go down to the D string, play five, uh, 7, 5. And then on the A string, 7, 5. So we've got Okay, now here's the second part. So this is pure minor A minor pentatonic and with the classic slide here. So we're going to play this starting out on D on D5. We're going to play D5 A7 slide down to A5, pull off to A4, A3. So that's all E minor pentatonic, that whole thing. Now we're going to slide up from G7 to G9. And then B8, B10. So the interesting thing is we end exactly where we start. Okay, let's go over this one last time. Here's the first chunk. Second chunk. Practice that over and over till you can do it without thinking and then you'll be able to maybe do it fast enough. But even then, wow, he was still fast. Here we go with line five. It's another barn burner, so buckle up. Let's go. Okay, here we go. We're going to start exactly where we left off. Again, the last time our favorite place, the B string 10th fret. It goes like this. And then we're going to do the rest in the next line. This one kind of has a Popeye the Sailor sort of quality to it. We're going to pull off twice from the 10th to the 8th on the B string, so B10, B8 twice. Then we go G9, back up to B8, B10, E8, E10, E12 twice. All right, that's the first part. Here's the last part, and this is kind of the crux of this one. We're going to play, it's going to sound like this. So we'll play on the E string 12, 10. And then we're going to have the series of pull offs and hammer ons. So 8, hammer on 10, pull off to 8, pull off to 7. Then 8, pull off to 7, 10, uh, B10, and B8. And then finally 7 and 8 on the B string. And that's that line. Now line six. A little bit of a rest before we go into the next chorus, which we're not going to cover in this lesson. Maybe we'll do a part two. But in any way, it's a little bit of a breather. So let's go through the last line of this one. Here we go. Carrying off from the last line that we did. Okay, again, we're kind of following this Dorian scale. We're playing this F sharp, if you noticed. But anyway, so we're going to play B7, B8, then B7, B8 with a whole step bend. And now we're going to play some notes that kind of backtrack and go down this scale. So it's B7, B8, and then G9, B7. Bend on G7, G7, okay, and then we'll come into the home stretch.
all the rest of that stuff is on the G string. All right, well, there we go. 25 or 6 to 4, the first chorus of the solo. Terry Kath really was an amazing player. Hey, if you want the rest of it, let me know in a comment, okay? Make sure you like the video and share it so that the video does well. That helps motivate me to do another one on this one, okay? So do your part if you can. It's free for you, right? Okay, it means a lot to me. All right, already told you to like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, stuff about the membership is below if you're interested in that. And anyway, hope to see you again. See you on down the road.